Okay, good evening everyone. Welcome to tonight's Common Council meeting. Before we have our, our city clerk read the quote for the week, I am authorized to say please vote tomorrow. It says on here, all right? <laughs> Thank you. It's a great joke, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Madam City Clerk, would you please read the quote? Thanks. Truth is the glue that holds government together, compromises the oil that makes governments go. Thank you very much. Call the 20th, uh, 22nd meeting of the Common Council to order. Please call the roll. Boren? Here. Bauk? Here. Gisha? Here. Hannah? Here. Heidemann? Here. Kittleson? Here. Kleunis? Here. Manny? Here. Meyer? Here. Montemayor? Here. Rinfleisch? Here. Ryan? Here. Smith, Here. Vanderweel, Here. Verhasselt, Here. and Wangeman. Excuse. 15 present. Quorum is present. This time it's uh, time to pledge uh, allegiance to our beautiful country, Holman Rinfleisch. Please lead us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Alderman Rinfleisch. Next item on the agenda is approval of the minutes. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would move for the approval of the minutes. Second. Motion and second to approve minutes <clears throat> under discussion. There being none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is a proclamation for Mr. Roger Lam, artist Roger Lam. Would you please step forward? Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Tonight we have a, a proclamation for artist Roger Lam. Ever since I came to Sheboygan way back about 25 years ago, I was hearing about this gentleman. He has become truly an icon, not only in the art field in Sheboygan, but in the area of love in Sheboygan. I think a lot of your, your paintings and, and, your, um, and, and where you talk and write your bulletins and so forth reflect that he has a, a good heart, a good feel for the city of Sheboygan, and that your art expresses that. I want to thank you for, for the work that you do and, and for the wonderful, wonderful way that you represent Sheboygan in your, in your, um, your paintings. Oh. Therefore, we have a proclamation for Mr. Lam. Whereas Roger Lam captures the essence of Sheboygan and positively reflects the city of Sheboygan through his art, and whereas Roger Lam published Off the Main Drive, a booklet that shares what the city of Sheboygan and the surrounding areas offer. And whereas Roger Lam came to Sheboygan right after completion of Layton School of Art in Milwaukee with the intent of staying one year, but has lived here for 40. Thank you for that one. And whereas Roger Lam fights to keep and maintain history, the history of Sheboygan by preserving his, its historical architecture, as is exemplified by his current studio on the corner of Erie Avenue in 7th Street, and whereas Roger Lam's love for Sheboygan and art has made him a vital member of the Sheboygan area and an important figure in the city of Sheboygan. I therefore, by, the virtu by virtue of the authority vested in me as the mayor of Sheboygan, do hereby extend my personal thanks and congratulations to Roger Lam and declare February 18th, 2008 as artist Roger Lam's day. And I urge our council, as well as all our citizens, to recognize artist Roger Lam and to extend their thanks to him for presenting the beauty of Sheboygan through his art to others. Thank you very much, Roger. Thank you very much. This is quite a surprise, and I certainly appreciate it. And certainly feel uh, just doing what I have to do and enjoy doing it and um, do like the community of Sheboygan and I defend it on many occasions and defend all of you people and what you all your little pro, your little little problems that you have and how you resolve them and uh, this is a uh, very nice and I thank you again thank you
Next item on the agenda will be uh, will be skipping. There was a uh, inability to contact the individual the second time. Next item, public forum. Madam City Clerk. Thank you. Um, first on the list is Henry Capitillo. Mr. Capitillo, can you give me your home address, please? Yes, that's 1619 North 38th Street, and that's in the town of Sheboygan. And I'm okay. here representing Home Inc. Okay, thank you. And you will have five minutes, sir. Okay. I had a whole statement prepared, but after talking with uh, Alderman Gisha, I'm going to re revise some of the things that I was going to say. Um, the concern that I had was I was coming here to let you know that um, I had received a certified letter from the city assessor's office. Basically, the city assessor's office is requesting that we basically reapply for our property tax exempt status, meaning that this is what our last application, what it was. And the concern that I have was, number one, I received this on... February 13th. Everything has to be completed and into the city assessor's office by March 1st. If uh, this was the process that you were going to go through, I think it would have been just a little bit more timely that organizations would have the adequate time to prepare all these documents. Uh, the concern that I have is if we're not able to get this and prepare it in time and submit it to the city assessor's office, that means we're in non-compliance. Does that mean that our property tax exempt status is taken away and we no longer are eligible for that? The other question I have is who is all having to prepare these? What other organizations that are nonprofits that are being asked to submit or to reapply for their property exempt status? I know that I talked to Alderman Gish at the beginning of the the council meeting and he assured me that the finance committee had directed or had asked that the city assessor's office review the applications that are presently there. Well, there's a difference between reviewing and asking an organization to reapply and complete all the paperwork that is now necess necessary for them to consider our property exempt status. And the concern that I had when, when I did talk to uh, City Assessor Lutz was, well, where did this come from? I, I hadn't heard anything at the City Council meeting or nothing. He said, well, I was contacted by various city officials that directed me to do this. Um, the, I don't question the authority or the intent of the City Assessor's office. They have the authority to do this. Is it being done right? I don't think so. Because what happens is, what selection process are you going to use? And I did ask that of the city assessor's office. He said, well, it's the age of the application. And I said, well, are you aware that our building, we've only owned it for four years, our last application was submitted in 2006. His response was, well, your application is old. So you have to complete everything that's in this letter, every parcel that you have, and all the supporting documents that go along with this. Now again, the concern that I have, is it just several organizations? Is it going to be one or two? Is it gonna be all the organizations? Are they gonna have sufficient time to complete and prepare this information to submit to the city assessor's office? I can understand that there's a mood for, to generate additional revenue, and I've been the first one that have come here and have said, you know what, there has to be something done. But I really think this is not the way to do it. I think that if you're going to do something, you want to have input, you want to have open discussions, you want to be able to have the people come here and to discuss the issue at hand. I don't have a problem with, with paying property tax to some extent, but if it's only us and no one else, and now we're talking about we already pay property tax. It's not like we, we're not paying that. We are. And does that mean now that uh, if we submit this and for whatever reason they're not going to approve our application, 
We now have to pay our full property tax, which we did the first several years when we had our building. At that time, it was almost $18,000 annually. Um, you're not going to, what you're doing is creating a hardship for all the low income people that we have in our building. They're the ones that are going to have the burden to pay additional money for this. And what I'm saying today is I would request that you look at this, you, you basically have discussion to do this. If you're going to generate income from it, I don't have a problem with that. In fact, I would encourage you to do it. But I think that it has to be in an open fashion where you have input from the nonprofits and you get their feedback on this. And I'm pretty sure that there's a lot of other organizations that feel the same way I do. Excuse me, Henry, would you like your additional minute? Yes. Okay, go ahead. That feel the same way that I do. That would, given the chance, they would probably do the same thing. Now, we're going to try to prepare this application, but this application included where the backup of some of the other things, you could just submit one. Now they're saying you need to submit everything for every single one. So now this application is probably one and a half times this size. And for us to prepare this by March 1st, I think you're creating a hardship for us. I think if this was the intent, you should have told us back in November, October, December, to give us adequate time to prepare this. Again, I say that uh, you want to have this, you want to provide input, you want to generate income, I'm all for that. The other thing I wanted to talk about is I've heard that there's people in the community that are asking questions pretty much about my health, uh, some of the problems that I had, and I want to just set everything straight right now. Um, I do have cancer. Um, I had major surgery. I went through six months of chemotherapy, and Excuse just me, to let people know, I'm not dying. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you very you, much. Hannah. Thank you. Um, some issues have been raised here that I think need to be addressed and also primarily because other organizations or directors of other organizations may be watching tonight that some of those issues have been raised. So I'd like for uh, uh, Mr. Dave Lutsky to step up and address this. Dave is the city uh, assessor. Testing. One, two, testing. Uh, I've never addressed this committee before, but it's true I am the new city assessor with the city of Sheboygan. And um, um, what I wanted to talk about now was what uh, Mr. Capitello was discussing, and this is regarding the, um, regarding the exemptions and my role. Every year from about January 1st to March 1st is really uh, a focus on exemption for city assessors across the state. Uh, this is the time when this is the time when we look at exemptions. Um, typically, um, if there's anyone a new classification change, people must uh, per a form that's uh, prescribed by the Department of Revenue. They must fill that form out and get it to us by March 1st. Um, since I'm new, you know all the different exemptions. Are, it's a new it's a new process for me in looking at all of them. Right now, we have uh, somewhat uh, around 522 exempt parcels in the city of Sheboygan. The vast majority of those parcels are city-owned. Um, then there's quite a few bit more that are owned by the school system, and so on and so forth. So in terms of my review process, what I'm doing is uh, we have to follow the, statute, the st state statutes to the letter of the law. And what I do is I've got a spread Excel spreadsheet, and I'm taking each parcel and putting it in a, a, the appropriate tab on the spreadsheet. So if it's, if it's a municipal property, it goes with the municipal properties. If it's a school district, it goes with the school district, and so on and so forth. Um, what has happened in the process of my review, which I started and I have reviewed, f for the most part, all the properties. But then what happened was there are some properties that when you look at the property, and you try to put it in a category because it must be categorized under a statute number. Um, some of them don't fit. Some of them are give cause for further review. Home Inc. was one of those properties. It, it, didn't, it didn't fit. You know, you pull a folder and you look at it, 
and it's and it's a building that's uh, somewhat of a uh, an apartment building. Um, it's uh, there's some residents there's some leased properties in there from what our records show. There's a lot of different things going on in those those buildings, but but also Mr. Capitello's uh, original application, he fit himself because you have one of the one of the aspects of the application that says that you must um, provide the precise statutory language. It's item number 27 on the application. You must give precise statutory language uh, telling how this property fits in, into an exemption. And on that form, and he, it was, he had said, uh, see attached. So on the attached, there was no exact precise statutory language. He had repeated a, an entire section which covered all kinds of benevolent, educational types of institutions, and then he went on further to, to say that he fit into an educational, uh, an educational organization. And, you know, from the onset as a city assessor, you look at it and you think, okay, there's a lot of people renting space there, a lot of, there's a lot of dwellings in there. Is that an educational institution? So I just took a couple of drives by to look at it as I do kind of a field audit. I didn't, it was just a cursory audit of it, but I couldn't see, I couldn't even find the words home ink on the property. I didn't see anything about classes. There was no class schedule. So what I did was I sent him a letter, and this is what we do. You know, this is part of our role. Um, I sent him a letter, and I outlined, I said, at a minimum, please include the following documents. So he showed you a, a big, thick document that could take a long time to create. But I have six items that I asked for on here, and most of these items should be in one's file. These aren't documents that you would need to create. These are documents that you would have on file, articles of incorporation, allocation of square footage based on usage, rent roll if applicable, 2007 and 2008 course schedules. I feel that that's important if you're claiming you're an educational institution that you should supply a course schedule and then listing of places where the general public can find out about the course offerings. Again, I, as a city assessor, have to uphold the state statutes. So, and there was a couple others, and there were other, other letters set out, and there will continue to be. But there wasn't a lot in the, in the form of exemptions that didn't fit. Most of them fit. You know, as a city assessor, if I see schools, I'm not going to go over to North High School and ask them to fill out this form. I pretty much know it's an educational institution. But there's some that you look at it and you think, hmm, is this in, in the same thing with tax and part? We've got some situations with tax and part. The city's assessor's office um, isn't, and I say this, it isn't about taxation, it's about fairness. Our role is to be fair and uniform based on the statutes. And that's what we've done here. And, and I know Mr. Capitello was, was rather upset. I can understand that. However, I also told him um, in terms of time frame that we're not late, we're early. In my conversation, I told him it was for the 2009 tax year. So we're being beyond generous. People think we're behind March 1st. No, we're beyond early. We're, this wasn't for this March. It was for next March. But these things take a long time. To, in review of one of these, you know, we have about 20 properties that we're looking at that have exemption, and we have to, I have to do a lot of work on these. So what we have to do is we have to dig deep. Each one of these uh, can take several weeks to do. And if you extrapolate that out, and then in the end, we'll make the determination for 2009 as a group. These are the ones that lost their exemption. That's, what, that's what's going on here. Um, you know, I don't. I don't really have much. I don't really have much more to say on this. Uh, you know, I. I think that um, Mr. Capitello. The only thing is, I can uh, w would suggest is next time maybe you can come in. We wouldn't have to go through this in a public forum. Um, you know, we're nice people. You know, we don't. We don't look for ways to not tax people. We look for ways to fit into the exemption. On my spreadsheet, I have for each property that's exempt. I have a statute that I have to put in. I've created this document for my own future reference. And then I have another big spot where I put in the precise statutory language for that particular property. So in the future, when we go and we open up this file, if somebody were to come to me and say, Dave, why is this property exempt? I can say per statute number, 70.11.4. Uh, and, the, and this is the precise statutory language that allows it to be exempt. So it's like really doing your homework.
dot your I's, cross your T's. And, and um, again, we, I have you know, maybe 20 properties that need some, some further review, and I don't feel this is a forum to be discussing you know, other people's exempt properties, but Mr. Capitello has brought this forward, and um, you know, I feel that uh, you know, I, I need to be obliged to be up here and, and, and speak about these things. Okay, thank you very much. Sure. Let's give Appreciate it. We do have one more uh, individual for the public forum. Chief Lestusky. Your Honor, I don't mean to interrupt. I just want to let you know that Alex Gilliam is here now. Oh, he made it? Yes. Okay, we will take him as soon as we let the other uh, person. Okay. Madam City Clerk. Um, last on the list would be Wendy Schmitz. Wendy, if you want to pull the mic down just a little bit, and then if you could give me your home address, please. Make me feel really short. <laughs> 25 Hine Avenue, Plymouth. Pine Avenue? Hine, H-E-I-N. Plymouth. Plymouth. Okay, you will have five minutes. And Sue, can I ask, did everybody receive one of these? Everybody but three. Alderman Manny, Alderman Clyunas, and Alderman Wangman did not get one because they were on Commission on Aging. I'm assuming they already had one. We can give them to them a little later. Just yep. put them up there. Correct. Okay. Well, my name is Wendy Schmitz, and I'm here as the supervisor of the Senior Activity Center of Sheboygan, so named in April of last year. A lot of what I'm going to tell you about is in this annual report, but I know that a lot of people don't read them, so I'm going to tell you what's in it. As you know, United Way published its community needs assessment in May of 2007, in which Sheboygan County identified that elderly care and support was the fourth biggest concern to families and agencies. I quote, research participants voiced the need for services and facilities that address general concerns for the elderly. The elderly population is soaring. Elderly care needs have increased in the last three years and is noted as one of the top changing needs of the community. Abuse of the elderly is a growing problem in the state of Wisconsin and in Sheboygan County. In 2004, the number of elder abuse statewide rose 2.2% and in Sheboygan increased by 7.7%. It's a fact. People are staying alive longer in greater numbers and we're really not prepared as families or as a community. That's where we come in. In 2007, our goal was to improve the image, the community's perception of the senior center, and to increase participation. We did both. We have had very positive press coverage, and our TV8 series, Se Senior Connections, has generated a lot of interest. The show, produced entirely by senior volunteers under the direction of the TV8 staff, has just completed its 10th episode. It seems that a lot of people read the Moxie, as many of our visitors read about us there. In 2007, we conducted approximately 175 tours. There are now 1,265 people in our database, and I do have to thank Jeff Scherzel for developing that. And last year, we increased our visits by 3,223, for a total of 30,742. Our most impressive statistic, I think, is that since the Friends of the Senior Activity Center hired a part-time volunteer coordinator in May, we now have 250 volunteers who logged 995 hours in seven and a half months. Money is always an issue, but the effort put into networking with community partners paid off. 18 special events were financially sponsored by local agencies from a monthly card party, a Halloween dance, a casino day, to providing the prize money for bingo. Choosing to offer trips to exciting locations such as Costa Rica and Australia really paid off. We boosted our revenue by 2,809 in commissions. A three-day tour to Chicago, escorted by one of our senior volunteers, proved to be a valuable fundraiser for us. We also changed the look of our holiday fair last year. 
Local vendors, 18 of them, contributed 10% of their takings and over $3,000 was raised that day. Of course, our goals are far more important than raising funds. We're proud that we're now fully accessible as the Friends of the Senior Activity Center provided the funding for handicapped accessible entrances and for one of our bathrooms to be remodeled to meet ADA standards. As people are living longer, they don't just want to be entertained. They want to be valuable, to keep learning and exploring new things. Not surprisingly, our volunteer computer tutors cannot keep up with the demand, and our writing class and readers theater group are growing quickly. We're now partnering, we just started in January with LTC, and we offer an evening computer class. I cannot stress strongly enough how the impact of volunteer Oh, excuse me. The impact of volunteers has changed our environment. Sixteen of our programs are led by volunteers. I'm in the enviable position where I see someone coming and I start to think, oh, but where can I put that activity? As I hear them enthusiastically say, we've had an idea. Can we start? They're starting another laser tag team. We are responding to the community's need for resources for our aging population. We are responding with lots of enthusiasm, energy, and support from our friends group. Excuse me, Wendy, would you like your additional minutes? Yes, please. Okay. We are one of the only centers in Wisconsin to be open only four days a week. We would like to thank Alderpersons Manny, Maya, and Klahunas for their work on the Commission on Aging, and Alderpersons Boren, Bauk, and Hannah for touring our center. Our theater group is called Not the Land of the Living Dead. If you haven't visited already, please do, but call ahead. We're very busy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Wendy. At this time, I'd ask uh, Mr. Alex Gilliam to come forward. We have one more presentation uh, to make here uh, to Mr. Alex Gilliam. Good evening. This is a uh, young man that many of you may have read about uh, that did uh, perform quite a heroic act that uh, I don't know a lot of people would do, but, but he did. And um, in the midst of potentially uh, serious harm to another individual, did something heroic. And uh, we're very proud of you. Presented to Alex Gilliam, in recognition of coming to the aid of a Sheboygan girl who had a gun pointed at her chest. On February 8, 2008, while at the home of his girlfriend, an acquaintance of hers showed up and asked to speak with her. Minutes later, you heard her screaming and rushed to her side. You saw he had a gun pointed at her chest and wrestled the rifle from the 15-year-old boy. You also managed to eject several rounds from the rifle and held him down until the police arrived. Your quick response and heroic efforts prevented a much more serious crime from taking place. I commend your gallant efforts and issue this certificate and affix my seal and, and signature upon it. Certificate of recognition to Alex Gilliam. Thank you very much. Before, before we move on, I just want to touch on, on uh, an issue real quickly. I know it's not on the agenda, but it's important enough to, to talk about rather quickly here. Uh, it's the issue that, that uh, involves the city's efforts in, in cleaning up snow. The uh, Department of Public Works, police, fire, uh, and water utility, and the mayor's office were getting a lot of calls as to what is it that you are doing to take care of the snow. As you know, we've had an incredible amount of snow falling. We've had some really, really uh, serious conditions out there, and people are wondering what is it that you're doing. I just wanted to touch a little bit on that, on what we're doing. But we are basically working with our, within our means and within our resources. And I went out there a couple of days and drove around the city, and one of the things that you see is people are not moving their cars. Okay, and, and I say that because I'd like to ask the public to, to please help us out when you're supposed to move the car please move your car because two things are going to happen. You're going to get a citation and they're not going to be, you're not going to be very happy. The other thing is if you don't move your car, the people that 
think you should are going to be mad at us because you're not moving your car and we're not enforcing the, the, uh, the ordinance. So it's important that the, the public moves the car. Another thing that's happening as we work within our means and resources is that we very low we are very low on salt. We've ordered salt, but we're not the only ones in Wisconsin that has ordered salt. So every city in, in, in the state of Wisconsin and any, anywhere else that have the same salt sources that have done that, and we're behind on that. We've got um, a minimal amount, and some of it is being mixed with sand and trying to do the best we can on there. As you know, last Friday, I, I believe last Friday, I, I issued an emergency executive order. Now, what that did was extended winter parking rules, not in snow emergency rules. The snow emergency rule will supersede winter parking rules. What the winter parking, extending the winter parking rules did is it helped us clear the streets so that our public works department can come through and clean a lot of the snow that has been accumulated. The order was issued not necessarily because a lot of the snow has fallen, although that is a reason, but it's because a lot of snow has fallen, a lot of accumulation is occurring, and then the streets are becoming narrower and narrower and narrower to the point where uh, police squad cars, uh, fire trucks, ambulances, uh, other vehicles in the city cannot get through because there's cars parked on the, on the sides and they're bringing, the, they're, they're causing the street to get narrow. So it's important to extend those rules so people move their cars so we can go in there and clean them. Everyone um, is going to get their street clean. I believe everybody has. But just to give you an idea, since November, just since November here, which is when our winter season started, the city of Sheboygan has had about 80 inches of snow. 80 inches of snow. In just the last month or six weeks, we've had 48 alone. That is a lot of snow, folks. That is a lot of snow. DPW has responded very well. Um, I am very proud of the way uh, Mr. Bill Bidner and, his, and uh, Mr. Bebo and his, and his employees have responded. Since the, uh, the, uh, in the last month, we've had about uh, 13 uh, snowfall events, okay, meaning that huge, like now, we're having snow falling. Two of those were actually snow emergencies that had to be declared. We have, uh, we, and we, the city has 200 and miles of right-of-way streets. That's what, within our city limits, we have 201 miles. That means we have 402 miles we have to pay because we have to go on this side and we have to go on that side. When the crews make a pass, a pass is referred to as cleaning all those miles of street, uh, both sides, which is 402 miles. In the last 30 days, the Department of Public Works has made 21 passes of our city, 21. Now let me put that into more perspective. That translates to about 8,400 miles of cleaning. If you went around the circumference of the state of Wisconsin with all those miles, we could do that six times around the state of Wisconsin. Folks, that's a lot of plowing. We are doing our job. It's a lot of plowing. We may not be able to get to your house the minute you want us to, and clean it in the manner that you want us to, but we're doing a job. You could even go with 8,400 miles, go from here to the tip of Texas in Brownsville and back three times. That's a lot of plowing. That's how much we've done out there. So our public works has done their job, and, and I commend them for them. The last three, 30 days, we've used 1,546 tons of salt. That's a lot of tonnage. Since November in 2007, we used 3,910 tons of salt. That's a lot of salt that we've used. Obviously, it's going to impact our budget. But if we've used that much salt, that much salt today, we're definitely going to be needing more salt, but so is everybody, every other community, and everybody's asking for salt, and the people that have the salt, the communities that have the salt, really don't want to share, and I don't blame them, quite frankly, because they don't want the problems that we're having, people calling my office and everybody else and saying, what are you doing to, to deal with the situation? But I want to assure the public and I want to assure the council that we're doing everything we possibly can to, to address the matter. We have and in doing so, we have 55 dedicated employees. That's how many people are doing that. And we have 40 trucks. That's all we have, folks. That's all we have. We put every single truck out there. We put every single employee to work. They're working overtime. They're working on weekends. That's a time anybody and everybody, including myself, would love to be with their families. They're out there working hard. To, uh, to help us clean their streets. And just since, last, uh, since Sunday, uh, Mother Nature 
gave us another big hit. What exactly was the city of Sheboygan then doing then? Because people have asked, well, what are you doing? You're not cleaning, you're not cleaning up. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Starting at 2, 2 a.m., we had seven plows out there with, with salters. They were working. Between 6 a.m. and 9 a.m., talking about Sunday, we added 17 more workers. Now, these, this is a weekend, so this is overtime. People are at home with their family. We added those 17 because we saw that there was flooding going on. The rain was melting the snow. The uh, catch basins weren't, weren't uh, taking care of the drainage, so it was flooding the streets, and people were running all over the place. And it, it was just a mess. I had calls from a lot of people then. We had, uh, in the beginning at 6 p.m., that day, we had a new crew that was dispatched to relieve all those people that were out there. So it was a constant barrage of workers out there all this time dealing with the situation. Total, we had 31 workers on Sunday to deal with the difficult freezing rain situation. We did not ignore it. We were out there. Again, we're working within our means and our resources. And I think it's, it's important to, to thank the Public Works Department, the police, and the fire department, and the water utility came to A2. And many citizens, I heard, were helping their neighbors, doing their share of cleaning the, the catch basins, and just doing whatever they possibly could to help us deal with, very, with this very, very difficult situation. And I also want to thank the, the elderly gentleman that walked past my house while I was shoveling the snow and reminded me, by the way, you do live in Wisconsin. That's just the way things are with snow. Folks, I ask for your support and understanding. Help us out in dealing with this very difficult situation, and we will take care of the snow problems for you. Thank you very much. Next item on the agenda. Oh, uh, Alderman Meyer, did you want to say something? Yes, quickly? thank you, Your Honor. I just wanted to add that every plow driver has a route that they follow. I've heard many people complain, while wow, the plow came down my road and he didn't have his plow down. Well, that is, the reason for that is that he is going to his route and they have to follow their, their routes. And someone will be coming through, and just that everybody understands that they are working hard. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is we have, oh, Alderman Bauk. Thanks, Your Honor. Just to, to add on to that, uh, one thing is I encourage a lot of people move in and out of Sheboygan, and winter's a long season. If there's someone near you that doesn't, isn't, doesn't appear to be living by the rules, Go knock on their door and introduce yourself to your darn neighbor and, and explain to them. We get young, you know, a young couple on our street. They just didn't know. They're new. They're working hard. They're not getting the newspaper. They're not listening to the radio. They're working. And they just didn't know. So knock on your neighbor's door and explain it to them. Be a good neighbor. That's number one. And number two, uh, on Sunday, I saw some streets flooded as I was driving through town and called the non-emergency police dispatch number just to say, hey, you know, I saw a street that looks kind of dangerous. Uh, thinking I was being a good citizen helping out. Uh, and she said, all I'm about, gotcha, we'll, you're number 42 on the list. Uh, so mm -hmm. citizens called in, the police, t the police dispatcher was wonderful about it, and uh, uh, the, the public works team was out there working their tails off. There were 40 intersections that were flooded, and they were out there taking care of them. So uh, I echo your compliments to Mr. Bittner's team. Thank you, Alderman Bout. Okay. <clears throat> Next item on the agenda, we have five hearings. I'm going to name, uh, read out each one, and then I'll ask if anyone would like to address the council with, with respect to either hearing. As I read them, if you want to speak on one, remember the number, and if you need to be repeated, please ask. Number one, for the proposed assessments of bituminous resurfacing for Illinois Avenue from South 14th Street to South 17th Street. Number two, for the proposed Assessments for bituminous resurfacing for North 4th Street from Niagara Avenue to Superior Avenue. Number three, for the proposed assessments for bituminous resurfacing for seventh, South 7th Street from Indiana Avenue to High Avenue. Number four, for the proposed assessments for bituminous resurfacing for Huron Avenue from North 2nd Street to North 10th Street. Number five, for the proposed assessments for bituminous resurfacing for North 6th Street from Superior Avenue to Gilly Avenue. At this time, is there anyone that would like to address the council? Is there anyone that would like to address the council? Is there anyone? We do have, uh, we do have a, a, a memorandum from uh, Mr. Bill Balky, city engineer. Copies were delivered to Alderman Balk and Ryan. 
Um, I don't normally do this, but this individual is, uh, was not able to be here due to health reasons, and uh, we will be uh, sensitive to her, her, her condition. Her name is uh, Janita Holgate, lives in 12, 1226 North 4th Street. She is a property owner who is on the list for hearings on number two on tonight's agenda for the proposed street assessments for bituminous resurfacing on, that, on North 4th Street from Niagara Superior. As I said, she will not be able to attend this hearing for health reasons, and what she would like to convey to the council is that she does not feel that North 4th Street needs to be resurfaced at this time and that it should be delayed for as much as five years. There are, more, there are many other streets that are more heavily traveled, like Erie Avenue and Superior Avenue, that should be done first. That is our comment. Is there anyone else who would like to address the council? President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd make a motion to close the hearings. Second. Motion and second to close hearings. One, two, three, four, and five. Under discussion. There is none. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. <laughs> Consent agenda 21 1 through 22 20. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I move that all ROs be accepted and placed on file and that all RCs be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second. Any discussion? Alderman Clay Eunice. Thank you, Your Honor. I just uh, questioning on 2217. Is this a housekeeping issue that they're clearing out old documents? Is that correct? Okay, thank you. Okay, President Hanna. Is it? Yes, it is. Okay. Is that satisfactory? Thank you. Okay. Okay. 22-1 through 20... 22-1 through 22-20. Any other discussion? There be a none. Please call the roll. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clyunis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Smith? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. And Verhassel? 15 ayes. Motion carries. Communications and petitions 2221 to be referred. Alderman Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. I uh, spoke with the uh, city clerk about this before the meeting, but for the rest of the council, on the agenda under 2221, uh, the last line uh, on the agenda where it says by September of 2008, that should be corrected to read 2007. City clerk is going to correct it for her records, but I wanted the rest of the council to know that that's 2007, and that goes back to the uh, table of organization committee from last July. Thank you. Thank you, Vice President Bourne. Report of officers 2, 2222 to 2232 to be referred. Resolutions introduced 3, 2233 by Alderman Meyer. Authorizing an application for financial aid from the non-motorized transportation pilot program to fund construction of a missing sidewalk connections. Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. Must I ask for suspension on the rules? I don't know. No. Then I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Being none, please call the roll. Bauk. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Kittleson. Clayunis, Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Rinfleisch, Ryan, Aye. Smith, Aye. Vanderweel, Aye. Verhasselt, Aye. and Boren. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 2234 by Alderman Hanna, Boren, Clayunis, and Gisha authorizing a refund in part for the 2007 personal property assessment for text parcel number 850494. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the <clears throat> resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Clyunis. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Smith. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Verhasselt. Aye. Boren. Aye. And Bogue. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 2235 through 2238 lies over. 2239 through 2242 
to be referred, but please make a notation on 2240 that will go to public works only, not finance. 2241 will go to finance as indicated, but it will also go to Motor Vehicle Review Committee, Public Works Committee, and the Marina and Harbor Committee. Hold on just a second. Would you repeat that, please? Yes. Motor Vehicle Review Committee, mm -hmm. Public Works Committee, mm -hmm. Marina and Harbor Committee. And finance? And finance is already there. Okay. Report of Committee 6, 2243, by law and licensing, recommending denying taxi cab driver's license number 7745, based on the applicant's record of violations related to the license activity and record of repeat violations. Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. I uh, move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Under discussion is uh, Angela Strojink here tonight. She's not here, Your Honor. Please continue. Uh, Ms. Strojink had two opportunities to appear before our committee. Uh, she, mm -hmm. she didn't go, cooperate with the committee. And then, as mentioned before, based on the applicant's record of violations, the committee unanimously decided, voted not to uh, grant the license. Thank you, Vice President Bourne. Any other discussion? There being none, please call the roll. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clionis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Smith? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Bourne? Aye. Bauk? Aye. And Gisha? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Report of, reports of Committee 7? 2244 by law and licensing recommending denying beverage operator's license number 7775 based on the applicant's record of violations related to the license activities. Vice President Bourne. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of the committee be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and second. <clears throat> Under discussion. Under discussion is uh, Andrew uh, Batansis LeBlanc here tonight. It's not here, Your Honor. Thank you. Please proceed. Uh, Mr. LeBlanc appeared before the committee at our last meeting and based on his record of violations related to the license activities, the committee voted unanimously not to grant the license. Thank you, Vice President Bourne. Any further discussion? There is none. Please call the roll. Heidemann. Aye. Kittleson. Clayunis. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Smith. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Verhasselt. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Gisha aye. and Hannah, aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 2245 to be referred. Report of committees 8, 2246 by finance, recommending authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2008 budget, establishing revenue and appropriations for 2007 lead hazard con control grant from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development in the amount of one million eight hundred and eighty four hundred and forty one thousand. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and adopt the RC and place the resolution upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Alderman Verhassel. Thank you, Your Honor. Could I ask the uh, chair of the committee just to explain the items I uh, titled site work? I assume that's to do with the police station. The transfer about one point four million dollars. President Hanna, do you were you able to do that? Yeah, Just I can't to remember exactly what it was. Paulette. Paulette. You're on. Hey, thank you, Mayor and Common Council. This is the the lead hazard reduction grant for homeowners. And so the, act, the site work has to do with the actual lead removal that we do in the homes. And they're either loans and or grants to homeowners. Yes. A number of different sites. Yes. Really Multitude of homes throughout Houses the community. The mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, President Hanna. And I think at the, at the same time, I think we place a lien on the property, don't we? Yes, we do. Okay. So that's... There's a whole process to go through on this. Okay. So is, if they remain in the home for a certain length of time, it becomes a grant. If not, it's paid back. Thank you, Paulette. Okay, any further discussion on 2246? There being none, please call the roll. Kittleson? Aye. Clionis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. 
Ryan Aye. Smith Aye. Vanderweel Aye. Verhasselt Aye. Boren Aye. Bauk Aye. Gisha Aye. Hannah Aye. and Heidemann. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 2247 by salary and grievances recommending amending the Vantage Care Retirement Health Savings Program to make participation mandatory for eligible meet public library employees. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move to accept and file the RC and the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Clayunis. Aye. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Smith. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Verhasselt. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. And Kittleson. Aye. Fifteen ayes. Motion carries. 2248 by finance recommending amending the Vantage Care Retirement Health Savings Program to make participation mandatory for eligible meet public library employees. President Hannah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to accept and adopt the RC and put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. Please continue. This is being done to, to be consistent with actually the, the plan document itself. So we're, we're doing something because the vendor needs their plan document to have certain language. Thank you, President Hannah. There being no more discussion, oh, Attorney McLean. Uh, this is the same document that just passed the last thing. So I guess I would suggest you file the copy that's attached here, accept and adopt the committee report, but file the duplicate resolution. Is that OK, Alderman Hannah, yes. President Hannah? Well, I'll, I'll amend it to file the resolution. Okay, so the motion is to accept and adopt the reporter committee and file the uh, copy of the resolution. Mm -hmm. okay. Any more discussion? There being none, please call roll. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Smith? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. And Clionis? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 2249 by finance recommending authorizing a, a transfer of appropriations in the 2008 budget establishing revenue and appropriation for witness fees for the municipal court cases for individuals subpoenaed by the city attorney. President Hannah. I'm sorry. Yes. yes, President Hannah. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move first to accept and adopt the RC and then to uh, place the resolution upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. President Hannah. Uh, this is a situation where uh, we're a little bit in arrears and paying some witnesses that have come, and we're not going to get witnesses to show up <laughs> if we don't comply. That's true. Thank you very much. Alderman Kittleson. Oh, thank you, Your Honor. I guess I just, I just wanted some explanation as to why, um, where this was coming from, and, and I guess how this came up. Were we paying these fees before? Or? Right. Apparently Thank we you. were paying them before, but then we had, I don't know why we got into arrears on that, and I think it shifted between the municipal court to our attorney's office. So the responsibility is now in the attorney's office, and that's where it's going to be taken care of. Okay. Thank you. Vice President Boren. Thank you, Your Honor. And just, just to add to the, the discussion from the uh, Finance Committee, uh, the $10,000 figure, I believe Attorney McLean mentioned, uh, is what he kind of anticipates for this year, but this could be adjusted. He feels that it may be able to be adjusted downward after this year to see what our experience is. So next year it may be 5000 it may be 6000 but we felt comfortable in recommending this for the first year. Mm -hmm. Very good. Attorney McLean? Thank you, Thank you Your Honor. Uh, what this is, Alderman uh, Kittleson is... Uh, the court uh, sent our office uh, an email saying from here on forward the court was not going to uh, pay for the witness fees out of the court account and that they needed to come from our account. Uh, our office, we historically have not had a budget for witness fees. We did check around other uh, municipalities that have municipal courts and many of them do process the witness fees through the city attorney's office. Uh, so we agreed to do that, but we need to set up an account in order to pay those monies out. Uh, 
the, the way it works is like in civil court where if you want to have a witness appear, you've got to subpoena them in civil court, circuit court, in a civil action. Uh, you have to pay the witness up front in order for them to be required to appear. Municipal court, the prosecution does not have to pay up front, but they do, if, when the witness does appear, uh, have to reimburse the subpoenaed witness. It's five dollars plus their mileage of 20 cents a mile. Uh, and so we need to establish an account in which to be able to pay those monies. Now, uh, the concern that the court has is uh, what they've been doing is taking that out of the court monies of revenue that's collected. But a number of uh, cases, they're not, they haven't collected the revenue from the defendant. And uh, so they don't ha have the money, in effect, to, to pay the witnesses. And what specifically led to this issue was uh, experts from the state uh, uh, department uh, where they certify the intoxilizer and provide expert witnesses on uh, first offense drunk driving cases in municipal court. Uh, the court was not going to reimburse them until the defendant paid. And then we got into a catch-22. The state said, well, we're not going to come anymore as expert until we get our witness fees. So, uh, so this is going to come out of um, our account once it's established and uh, then hopefully we will get reimbursed those monies as the defendants pay the forfeitures. So as Alderman Warren said, this $10,000 is a ballpark figure that's a high number but we don't have anything more concrete and hopefully by you know next budget we'll have a better number to use. Alderman Kittleson, follow up. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, so this would just be the normal way that you probably would set this up anyway. Yes. There, it's nothing unusual, right? Thank you. OK. Thank you. OK. There being no more discussion, there, there is a motion to accept and adopt mm -hmm. of 2250 and to put the ordinance upon its passage. Please call the roll. 2249. I'm sorry, 2249, yes. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? Aye. Smith? Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clionis? Aye. And Manny? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 22 of Report of Committees 9 2250 by salaries and grievances is reestablishing the salaries of the election officials. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that we accept that the RC be accepted and filed and the ordinance be put upon its passage. Motion and second. Under discussion. Your Honor, I would like to make an amendment to that. Okay. Please do. Uh, now, therefore, the Common Council of the City of Sheboygan do ordain upon passage and publication as of February 2nd, 08, and then as follows. We have to put the date in there so that it actually happens. There's a motion. Is there a second to second. amend? Second to amend. Any more discussion on that? We will take the vote on the... Alderman Gisha, did you want to say something? Yes, thank you, Your Honor. I'm going to abstain from this vote because uh, actually I'm a poll worker. Uh, and uh, I attended uh, the instructional training last week, which is really interesting. Sue's got people who have been doing this for 20 years, and some of them longer. Um, so I will be uh, receiving these funds, but then turning and donating them back to the Junior Police Academy. Oh, and by the way, there's some ex-aldermen doing it, uh, Dulcie Johnson, uh, uh, Mark Sagali, and others. So, Graf. Uh, Alderman Graf. Uh, so the more the merrier. I think Sue would love the help. Love the help. County Board Supervisors also. Thank you. County Board Supervisors also have okay. volunteered. Great. Thank you. On the amendment, as read. Any more discussion on that? We'll take the vote on the amendment only. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstain. One abstention. Motion carries. Alderman Montemayor, motion to pass as amended. Thank you. I move that the amended ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Montemayor. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Ryan. Aye. Smith. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Verhasselt. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Gisha. Abstain. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Clionis. Aye. Manny. Aye. And Meyer. Aye. 
14 ayes, one abstention. Motion carries. Ordinance is introduced 10, 2251 through 2255 lies over. 2256 to be referred. Matters laid over 11, 2133, resolution number 2030708 by Oliver Meyer, authorizing executing a one year lease for the agricultural property in the town of Wilson, formerly owned, formerly owned by John Poth, Jr., Alderman Meyer. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that we accept and adopt and put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Rinfleisch? Aye. Ryan? <coughs> I'm sorry? Aye. Thank you. Smith? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Kittleson, Clayunas, Manny, aye. Meyer, aye. and Montemayor. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 2134, resolution number 2040708 by Alderman Hanna, Boren, Bauk, Gisha, and Clayunas, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2008 budget, established revenue for appropriation and appropriation for LSTA grant funds received by the Mead Public Library. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would uh, <clears throat> move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Ryan. Aye. Smith. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. Verhasselt. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Gisha. Aye. Hannah. Aye. Heidemann. Aye. Kittleson. Clionis. Manny. Aye. Meyer. Aye. Montemayor. Aye. And Rinfleisch. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 2135, resolution number 205708 by Alderman Hanna, Boren, Bauk, Gisha, and Clayunas, authorizing a transfer of appropriations in the 2007 budget, established revenue and appropriation for funds received by Meat Public Library. President Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would uh, move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There is none. Please call the roll. Smith? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Clionis? Aye. Manny? Aye. Meyer? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. And Ryan? Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. 2147, General Ordinance Number 860708, by Alderman Montemayor, Meyer, Gisha, Heidemann, and Verhasselt amending the municipal code so as to change the job code and the job description for the lieutenant of police, assistant ship supervisor, slash operations division in the police department of table of organization. Alderman Montemayor. Thank you, Your Honor. I move the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and second. Under discussion. There being none, please call the roll. Vanderweel? Aye. Verhasselt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Gisha? Hannah, Aye. Heidemann, Aye. Kittleson, Clionis, Manny, Aye. Meyer, Aye. Montemayor, Rinfleisch, Ryan, Aye. and Smith. Aye. 15 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters? Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. 2257 is an RO by the city clerk submitting the 2007 annual report of the Senior Activity Center of Sheboygan. That lies over. 2258 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2008 and June 30, 2009. That will be referred to law and licensing. 2259 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a claim from Diane Miller Veldboom for alleged damages to her vehicle when a snowplow hit her vehicle. That will be referred to risk management. President Hanna, motion. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd make a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion second to adjourn. Any discussion on that? All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Stand adjourned. Good night. Thank you very much. <laughs>